Welcome to the Thursday, June 10th meeting of the New Market Conservation Commission. We will start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Sue, will you call the roll, please? Patrick Reynolds. Present. Jeff Goldnoff. Present. David Bell. David, you're there. David, yeah, okay. Sam Kent. Present. Melissa Broke. Present. Megan Brayback. Present. Okay. okay. Uh, we have because we, we only have three members of the uh, Conservation Commission, I am gonna go ahead and uh, move that we have Melissa appointed for uh, as a voting member tonight as our alternate rep. I'll second that. Do you need a second? I don't, I don't think I do actually, do I, <laughs> Sue? I think that's, we're just allowed to appoint them if, if we don't have anyone else here, right? Um, okay. So, uh, we don't have anyone here from the public and I don't have any, uh, I didn't have any mail or any issues that came up before us. Um, the only thing I got in, in the mail was just the official documents um, exercised for the Clark property. So all of those legal documents have been exercised and that uh, easement is now complete. So uh, that's good to see. Um, I wanted to go ahead and, and let the public know about some June events that we have here uh, that the Conservation Commission is involved in. Uh, the first one actually occurred last week and that was um, we had the program put on with the New Market Public Library um, by Kevin Martin, and that was on Big Trees of New Hampshire. And I just want to thank uh, Lauren McLaughlin from the uh, New Market Public Library for all of her assistance in putting that on. And I want to thank Kevin Martin, who did a great job in presenting on that topic. Um, it's uh, I recommend this book if you haven't read it before. It's it's a great resource in just learning about, um, you know, the natural history of New Hampshire because a lot of that is told through learning about the trees. Um, it is remarkable to learn that there's 600 year old trees in New Hampshire. You you it's it seems hard to believe that that could be possible, but um, uh, Kevin has found some black gum trees that are in New Hampshire that were, because they don't have very much timber value, were never cut down. And so they're about 600 years old. And he also highlighted some of the older trees in Newmarket here. So that was, that was fun. Um, next week, um, exactly uh, a week from today at 4.30 at Wigan Farm, uh, Matt Tarr will be giving a talk. He's from UNH Extension, and he'll be talking about some of the birds that you see out there at Wigan Farm and just other natural things that occur out there and the sort of prairie uh, open field grass habitat. So it's open to the public. We'll try and get it out there as much as possible on social media as well, but again, that's 4.30 at Wigan Farm, which is right on Grant Road. You can park right in the parking lot there and we'll meet in the parking lot. And then- I'm sorry, Patrick, what day was that? Wigan Farm, but what was the date? The, that's the 17th, which is a Thursday. Okay. Thursday at 4.30 uh, p.m. Thank you. I can't hear you. Is that just me? Can everyone else hear? No, I can't hear anything either. Yeah, I just thought it was me. <laughs> oh, Sam. So Patrick, I think so your sound is cut out. I, yeah. Patrick looks kind of semi-frozen, but he's not. 
Eltra. Tim, help. looks like he's figuring it out or trying to figure it out. <laughs> Tim is right behind him in the little room, so I don't know. He's getting the microphone closer to his face. <laughs> is, is that helpful? <laughs> no, Patrick, it, it's, it's like all sound was completely cut. We're not even cutting background noise or anything. to fill the time maybe <laughs> um next month the meeting is in person i've not been to an in-person meeting yet so is that in town hall is that the room he's sitting in in town hall on the second floor okay they're doing all downstairs downstairs now. okay not up in but downstairs around the big okay. table this will be fun <laughs> I'll, I'll actually meet people it's the home alone face. Yes. Chuck one one one. Hello, hello. Can anybody hear? Hello, hello. Can what? This makes no sense. Not yet. Give me two seconds. Check one, can anybody hear me? Check one. USB digital device. So we go to that. USB audio device. Check one. Check one, 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 one. See, we're getting sound right here. So why aren't we getting sound to them? We, we can, can hear, hear it's you, very but loud. It's, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's loud and staticky with, you know. Can you hear Patrick? Feedback. You can't hear Patrick, yeah. but can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Not Patrick. It's not that good. It's really. No, we can hear you, but I can't tell what is you're saying. Can you? It's 
Hello? Garb or static. Can you still hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. How does it sound now? Much, Much better. better. Okay. Okay. So new market fishing derby. Is... Can't see you anymore though, Patrick. Yeah. Throw that out quick. Is uh, Saturday, June nineteenth. Um, my recommendation is get there early before it starts, so around seven, seven thirty in the morning, to secure your fishing spot on the pond. There at uh, Lang's Lane, where it's held. Um, we did have a scholarship recipient. Um, his name is Caden Corbin. Um, uh, he was approved, and uh, he will be receiving the New Market Conservation Commission scholarship. So, make pleased to announce that as well. Um, so let's go on to approval of minutes from the meeting on May 13th. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes? Any uh, edits or questions? Okay, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second, do we have a second? Second. Second oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Why don't we, Sue, can you call a roll on approval of those minutes then? I will. Okay. So, Patrick Reynolds. Yes. Jeff Golnoff. Aye. David Bell. Yes. Sam Kenny. Yes. Melissa Brogel. Yes. Five zero zero. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ellen is not here, so I will go ahead and um, give the treasurer's report. Um, the uh, current balance uh, of the um, fund, the conservation fund, is um, sorry looking at the wrong thing there uh, let's see here oh there it is okay um, current current balance is uh, one hundred and sixty nine thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars thirty eight cents the Shanta Park fund has four thousand seven hundred and sixty four dollars and forty six cents um, Uh, we don't have any new uh, reven revenues um, as of this year, uh, or as of as of this report, I should say. Um, let's see. I think we've lost you again. No, nope, can't hear you, Patrick. That's funny. I just thought he was taking a really long pause. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought he was doing Me last too. time, giving us time to write down the date. The very I thought he was adding up the remaining funds in our in our our payroll account. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I just wanted to know if we had received the credit. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes. I keep, I keep breaking the microphones. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Let's before I go out again. Let's let's go on to the Riverfront Committee, and hear from Sam. 
Uh, yeah, so timely. We just met on uh, Tuesday afternoon. So things are progressing kind of similar to our last update. Um, we have a draft of an RFQ together for professional services to start, um, hopefully bring someone in over the next couple of months and start, you know, talking about planning of, of the riverfront area and coming up with some, you know, conceptual visualizations of the area and stuff like that. Um, we're still planning on applying for the coastal resiliency grant from New Hampshire DES uh, that is due at the end of next month. So we'll be getting into that in a little bit more detail over the next couple of weeks uh, for submission. Um, actually, one one question or one thought uh, to, to put out here to the, the committee is um, the, the grant that we are pursuing uh, is a matching grant. Um, it's a four to one match from, from the state through that. Um, but that does mean that the, you know, 20% of the, the project's, you know, funds would be put up by the town. And I think, uh, some of that is just going to be trying to find if there's support for that. And one of the focus areas of both the grant and the riverfront, you know, project right now is looking at resiliency at Shanda park and also trying to see if we can maybe tie that into the, you know, basically the riprap hardened, um, you know, retaining walls right now, and also maybe a wall repair. So obviously don't have all the answers right now, but I know we had received some money basically for that exact concept and wondering if that's something that, you know, as the commission, we would be willing to, to consider, you know, chipping in for this ultimate thing. If, you know, the town is able to receive the grant. So how much money are we talking about? Um, I would still, end, but best guess right now is that overall the town would be looking to put up like five or $6,000, depending on total, um, uh, grant request. Um, so I know we had our, the thing we got from Shanda park, I think was like four. Um, but you know, obviously it wouldn't cover the whole thing, but it could contribute to this since a, a focus of it and a big part of you know, pursuing the grant is trying to address, you know, long-term resiliency of the park. And also I'd, I'd love if this, one of those solutions also address the retaining wall at the same time. Yeah, I think, I think you should, I think once you have a figure, if, even if it's just a very close figure, like not an exact figure, you should bring that to the, to the group or to the commission and we could talk about it. Um, I think it would be great too if the town council was made aware of it as well and I know Megan can probably do that but I think uh, I view it as a town project as much as a conservation commission project definitely yeah definitely so I it's been mentioned to Steve and in, in passing and in, in the rough dollar amount so obviously no no particulars have been sorted out so far okay. but didn't know yeah if, if as a something we would consider you know supporting in in part absolutely i think there would be support for it but i think uh we just have to get yeah closer to knowing what that contribution is or or come with an ask you know ask say you know the committee is recommending x dollars um from the uh, or is asking for x number of dollars from the conservation commission and then we could we could vote on it. Sounds good to me. Sam, I have a question. Sure. Do you know um, some grants will let you use volunteer hours as match? Um, and there's, you know, an hourly pay rate so you can figure it out. Do you know if this grant would let us do that at all? I don't know yet. I haven't read the fine print on this one and see if they'll do in kind services. I kind of hope that they do because then maybe we can use our time as a match as well. So I, it, to be determined. Um, yeah. I'm fully expecting that, yeah, we'll have to put up some sort of money. Right. Probably over the next couple of weeks, we got to look at what we're actually requesting, what are the terms of the grant, and then try to figure out a funding package from there. So it may not be this meeting even, it may be the, um, or sorry, the next meeting, it might be more like August that we would have a more particular <laughs> refined yeah. thing and an actual ask, you know, to, to put before everyone here. 
because I, I think we're probably a month or two from from real movement on a couple things still. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, good, good point. Should should investigate. Yeah, a lot of DES grants do. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's the case with this one too. Even if it's just you know partial of the five grand or whatever it ends up being. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Uh, town council. Yeah, I have a couple updates. Um, the solar array project that the town has been working on with revision energy for a while over at, um, on new road, uh, is, uh, moving forward with the next step, which is, um, an exciting update. Um, uh, and so the next step is a system impact study, which is going to be done by Eversource. Um, and that's going to be an engineering study that evaluates the impact of a proposed interconnection or transmission service request on the safety and reliability of the transmission system. So um, legal counsel is kind of working on, on getting that going, but in the time I've been on council, it's just been a note in the town manager's report saying, you know, a solar array is happening. And so this is the first time there's like an update. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and on a similar that kind of came from energy and environment. And I think that there's some overlap in our interests. So I like to share what they're working on. Um, they met with Revision and um, another company, I didn't write down which one, um, for RFP for a Solarize project or Solarize program, um, working on discounts on panels for residential customers um, in new market. So that is, as a homeowner, I'm very excited to hear about that. <laughs> um, and then the last thing actually came up during Riverfront, um, Mike Hoffman from the town shared that arts and tourism is working with um, facilities on potentially a lighting installation for the waterfall. Um, and I had mentioned to him that they should check with you folks um, just to see if there's any conservation concerns as far as how that could impact um, fish or dark sky or anything like that. Um, so that will probably be coming to you all at some point. Um, and then also just wanted to share that um, uh, the the um, my brain is not working right now. The Neil Mill uh, we have not yet gotten a request um, about anything from that from the town side. Um, so I know the planning board has looked at it, but it hasn't come to the town yet, and so that's why you haven't seen it show up on our um, agenda or anything. We can't we can't do anything until we've been requested to. So just so so you know. And you, you expect that request to come from the applicant, right? The, the Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Can, can I throw one thing out on that quick? The, um, the lighting of the waterfall and aquatic animals. I know that years ago, I'm not an expert on this at all, but we had a couple of um, members of the Conservation Commission, um, and we were discussing lighting the flagpole at Shanda Park. And they... Uh, a lot of information was brought forward about the impact of uh, nighttime lighting on aquatic animals. So uh, it might be, or sorry, marine animals, <laughs> not aquatic. Um, so we might be able to dig that up, but there there was some kind of push on lighting the waterfront, actually push back on lighting by the waterfront. Thanks, Jeff. Planning board. Okay. Um, so, Patrick, I believe that at our meeting you were appointed to the um, to the SRPC. Is that correct? Uh, to the to the Lamprey uh, River Advisory. Oh, yeah, Lamp uh, LR Lamprey. Yeah, sorry, our agenda says yeah. SRPC. And I was when I was reading it, I was like, I think it's the Lamprey River Advisory. So yeah, yeah they, I I don't know if they informed you, but they did. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for serving on that appreciate it um, we had what one thing the Commission might be interested in is that at 258 Wadley Falls Road they're doing a subdivision up front that's in an area where there is a conservation easement held by um, I believe it's an NRCS easement perhaps uh, or it's at least to the United States of America the easement anyway I think it's uh, NRCS but um, so there was a frontage easement so that's the, um, the Bevins property so they did do a frontage subdivision there and, and cut a three acre commercial lot out, um, which does cover the strip of land that's the access 
to that conservation easement. Um, and that did pass, um, but the, yeah, so that did pass at our meeting the other night. And uh, Jeff, I have a question about that. Sure. Uh, so the sorry, not two fifty eight, or is it four hundred and one London Falls Road? I right. I but it's a it's the Bevins property, which yeah. is yeah. so. My question about that would be: the last time I checked, when I did a walk on that property as part of that NRCS uh, uh, easement, uh, there's not just a few tires but thousands and thousands of tires on that property as part of that subdivision are they going to remove that did come up and it was seen by the planning board as not in their jurisdiction as to the status of those tires i believe it was was it the state it might it, it was felt that that was not that that didn't have an impact on that three acre subdivision lot and that the tires were not on that three acre lot. Is, is that help? Well, it explains, it explains it. I, <laughs> I don't necessarily think I agree with that, but yeah, it's DES has a jurisdiction over, uh, right. you know, tire dumps, I believe which is what that was at one point but there was an agreement in place that the tires were going to be removed i thought so i would just hope that that's still going to happen um yeah I, yeah and it was unknown by the surveyor who represented bevins and and uh, i don't believe uh, mr bevins was present at the meeting so um there was someone in the audience that i didn't know so i'm not sure if that was him or not but um, he didn't speak on it. Um, but it was definitely brought up and asked. Okay. Um, and and the status was definitely as to whether or not they were there. So the it must be. The surveyor only only focused on that front three acres. And okay, the right. Residential there, home. Yeah, the, there's the land an existing had, house there. Is that is that part of the three acres they're talking about? No, it's on the right hand side adjacent to Southeast Gravel uh, land there, okay. or or the strip out back. You yep, know? Yep, yep. So so that and that's why it encumbers the or or a little strip of the conservation easement, the access portion of it passes through the lot. Okay. And that's three not, acre lot. And that's not considered on that aquifer either? I believe it might be within the aquifer district. So how are they doing a septic system there if they're doing a subdivision on the aquifer they are putting in a septic system it is serviced by town water uh -huh. and it is allowed <laughs> they still need to get nhdes septic approval uh -huh. which they have not received yet so i mean there are conditions to the approval such as receiving the nhdes septic okay. approval they are on town water, but not town sewer there. And I believe it's in the, I can check on that really quick. I believe they said it was in the, or might be just adjacent to it. I don't want to misspeak on that, so. Yeah, I just remember that there were other, it, other adjacent properties that had looked at developing houses out there and they, they hadn't been able to because they they must be in the aquifer district so they're so they're not able to just I, mean, I know the adjacent parts of the adjacent sand pits are and the well is almost directly across the street right right uh, or whatever they were going to make it into a well back behind um the crematory to the side of it there um i'll be honest that we we, we didn't get a chance to see the plans until the day of the meeting <laughs> Hmm. So I had not even seen the plans until that um, that evening, actually, because I was at work and didn't get to review them. But it, it, I mean, it's clear on the plan, and the and the um, the town planner and the and the and the chair and vice chair didn't raise the issue of the septic being there as you know a, a grounds to deny. And um, yeah, there, are there any other questions on that I can give a go at answering? <laughs> Apologize, I'm a little new on the planning board, so I'm kind of getting used to how things flow. But 
that is that the other thing folks might be interested in I'll, I'll, I'll share was that there um, there was a du the duplex that went in at 258 Wadley Falls Road there was a very minor um, shoreland impact to the designated river 250 foot um, protection area on that property where they they moved a um, it wasn't in design but they moved a a deck around to the side of the house very small i think the deck was like i forget what it is it was very small it was like a total of 1200 square feet or or something like that it was like 700 on the deck and and a few hundred on a corner of the driveway that get into the 250 foot buffer um, for the Piscassic River. Um, again, that was not, and, th and they have to go through a full DES shoreland application for that to, to keep those items there. So as of right now, the subdivision was passed um, through because that is again, not a town jurisdiction, that's a state jurisdiction. And um, that, that's all, there, there were two other things on the, on the, um, it was a, the class conversion of the six to class five road and they did a little land transfer, but I had to recuse myself from that discussion um, and didn't pay. I tried to, you know, I should have left the room technically, but I sat out back and <laughs> didn't, didn't really listen to that one. Um, but I know that that did pass as well. And that's that's Hershey Lane you're talking about, right? I think that, yes, that would be Hershey yeah. Lane widening. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds like there's a lot of a lot of building activity. <laughs> yeah. The market sure conditions are dictating more houses being built. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, that is all we have on the agenda. Um. The only thing I just want to remind people is that next month we will be uh, meeting in council chambers upstairs, not down here. This this space is going to more for any all meeting back in chambers. So whether it's planning board, town council, school board, all of that will be back upstairs. Um, starting next week uh, so hopefully we'll all be in person and we can all see each other and nice nice to see everybody um, I just want to mention the dates again because there was problems with my mic so next week Thursday June 17th 4 30 p.m. is the talk at Wigan Farm which is on Grant Road with Matt Tarr from UNH uh, extension and on Saturday the 19th uh, get there early 7 a.m. in the morning 7:30. Uh, the new market fishing derby uh, is taking place and that's um, at Amanda Richmond's uh, pond which is on Langs Lane I believe it's about 40 Langs Lane is the address uh, you can't miss it the Boy Scouts run it and it'll be easy to find on Langs Lane. Um, so that's all. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Can I, can I ask, can I mention one more oh, thing? Oh, sure. Can I bug you? Sorry, I don't want to keep very, people very long. It's just really quick. Um, I just want to mention just really quick turtle activity, if I could, is that folks need to be quite careful out there on the roads these days. Um, there have been four blandings here on Ash Swamp Road. Um, in the past several weeks, and so and, uh, we have not had nesting ones. We had three large nesting snapping turtles and a nesting painted turtle, and uh, four blandings passing through. So, um, and they the um, the town has come and dug out the culvert once recently, and it was the mud was replaced overnight. <laughs> so the water level is fluctuating a lot <laughs> it dropped about um two feet or so vertically the day they they pulled it out and then the next morning it was back up again and 
So the fishing game has mentioned that that, that causes can uh, disrupt turtle activity and cause movement, um, excess movement. So just throwing that out there that uh, it's a it's I know it, I I don't mean to bring it up as a, as a personal concern as I know it's adjacent to where to my property, but um, not on my property direct. Um, but I didn't know if there had been any discussion at the commission regarding a potential um, beaver deceiver culvert upgrade or anything like that. We we brought it up with the town, but it didn't go any further than that as far as you know suggesting yeah. that idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've we've reached back out to the state, and I think the state is at the point where they've we get the feeling for their input right. as to uh, what the direction we should head. And, um, so, okay, all right. Maybe I'll maybe I'll speak with you off, um, or, or or try to look for or talk to DPW potentially, I guess, about in a, a change there and, and seeking some some funds for future upgrades via a grant or something. Okay. Not if that's something that the commission's interested in supporting, if I kind of look into that Absolutely. or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Patrick, could you spell Caden Corbin's name for oh, me? Oh, sure, okay. sure. Yep. Again, Caden Corbin is the recipient of our, uh, the scholarship. And Caden is spelled C A D E N and C O R B E N. And he is actually he wrote a very nice application which was reviewed by Chris and Melissa Sharples and um, he's going to be studying uh, planning. So like urban planning and you know, just like our planners do here and and they have a big impact on our environment. So he wrote a very nice application and we wish him lots of success and all the other applicants uh, graduates tomorrow. So congratulations to all the new market seniors that are graduating tomorrow. They must be very excited. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? Melissa. I, I, I'll make a motion, but can I say one more thing first? I'd like to send out um, some, I don't know, some well wishes to 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 um, to um, uh, Richard Shelton and his wife, who were in a, a minor car accident. And Richard, as we all know, is, uh, is has done a lot for the community and for conservation in this town. And uh, just you know, sending well wishes <laughs> to to them. And, Thanks. Uh, Hope they're doing okay. And I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thanks, Jeff. That's very nice to keep Richie Shelton in your in your thoughts. Okay, do we have a second on that motion? Sam? Again. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Good evening, folks. Have a pleasant night. Night.